Hey, welcome to the VR Report. I am your host, David O, and I'm here with Pete Moss. Hi, Pete. Howdy. Pete is from Unity Technologies, and he's going to give us some insights on what Unity 3D is doing today. How's it going? It's going good. How did you uh, even start working at Unity 3D? Because you know we met at one of Un at one of the Unites, which is a huge conference hosted by you guys. Mm -hmm. How we did got you even four of those now, yeah, four every year. Four years already. Back then, I think it was only one a year. That's right. And, uh, so even in the few, last few years, we've grown. Around the world. All over the world. Yeah. Can you d describe to me um, your history of joining Unity and also give me some background? Uh, my background's interesting and diverse. Uh, I'm not your standard uh, software engineer. Uh, all my, I have uh, several degrees in music composition. Uh, I'm a classically trained composer. Wow, I didn't uh, know that. I'm into, I got, really got into electronic music. I guess my furthest back background is I taught myself to program when I was 15. My first programs were making the speaker beep. Hmm. Um, so in a way, music and software and all of the, the, the arts and the tech were always interrelated in my brain. Uh, when I was in grad school, I started uh, really studying electronic music. I was always really good at math and that sort of thing and programming. It just came easy. Uh, I, I would say that I studied hard, but the reality is I didn't study hard. I just made content. I loved. made things yeah. and yeah. learned while I was doing it. Yeah. So I wasn't trained in, the, in that regard. I trained myself because I was, I was so interested in what I was going to do. A lot of that uh, kind of spread out, and over time, I, uh, I, you know, I was in a PhD program in Seattle. Uh, decided at a point that I didn't really need a PhD. I didn't care anymore. Hmm. Um, and I always kind of wanted to be a college dropout, so I succeeded. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, I dropped yeah. out, and uh, and it was cool. Um, but what I did is I I got into software engineering. I, I knew I had been doing it for a long time. I had been working on open source software, some computer music languages, uh, things like that. And what I realized is that the math background I had and the DSP background I had and, and all of the things that I had developed over time were applicable in a lot of different areas. So then I started getting into computer vision heavily. Hmm. Uh, what is computer vision except audio in two dimensions? That's right. Like I mean, the DSP math is almost the same. same. Um, so I just started doing that work. I, as I mentioned a little bit uh, before this, I was also working uh, at a company uh, in small UAVs. I built a tracking system to track bad guys in desert climates, if you will. Um, I built systems to uh, analyze aerial photographs in Afghanistan. Uh, I also built systems to measure the amount of glass on a table in an industrial setting. I did a lot of different projects, but they all involve stereo vision uh, and a lot of the processing techniques that I've been picking up over the years. Uh, fast forward a little while, uh, our company got bought. Uh, the UAVs were cool, the surveillance was cool. I'm very, I'm, I'm very, I'm okay with that. I come from a military family, so keeping my people safe, right? It, it, it's it in your made DNA. sense, yeah. you know. I. I but making weapons to kill other people was a different thing. And when mm -hmm. the work started going towards, well, can we pack the plane with C4 and fly it into the bad guy that you're looking at? Mm. I don't know. I wasn't interested in that. And I guess that for me, I stepped back and I thought about it. And I have powers. We all have powers in, this, right. in this industry. And I wanted to use my powers for good. Mm. So I stepped out of that. And I followed a dream that I had had for a long time, which was to get into games. Mm -hmm. I was a gamer from way back when. Right. but. Sometimes being a gamer and making games, they're not the same thing. But what I wanted to do is, is get into that. So I got into serious games. I made applications that helped burn patients. I made applications that helped PTSD um, sufferers. So in a way, I felt like I was using the same skills in doing 3D and VR and that sort of thing uh, in a way that I could help people rather than hurt them. And that only accelerated my interest and made it more interesting to me. And on top of that, as an artist, I mean, all my degrees are in art, I wanted to make art with it. And so I started using my powers for good for artistic use as well. And uh, there was a time when I happened to see a job listing. Unity was hiring for a simulation and visualization expert, mm -hmm. uh, specifically for a military and training uh, product that yeah. they were building at the time. I sent a resume. An hour later, they called and said, can you come in tomorrow? We want to talk to you. I didn't even expect a call back, but they did, and it just snowballed from there. I mean, it took a little while to go through the hiring process, as it, as it frequently does. I wasn't sure I had the job for a while, but when I was in, I was in, and uh, it was pretty great. Uh, and since then, I have uh, met um, just so many amazing people, traveled a, way more than I ever expected I would, 
and got to just meet cool people doing cool things in cool parts of the world. And the funny thing is, I, f I wound up in the middle of all of this. Uh, yeah, I could have wound up at other places, and, and it wouldn't have been the same, but the fact that I wound up at Unity at this time, at this place, has really opened up my doors for me all over the place. You know, the power of the logo, as I say. <laughs> People just look at it, and they, they let me in. And, and so there's a level of access, I think, that I get. I don't know if I earned it all, but here I am, and, I, and I'm trying to use it in the ways that will help not just me, but the other people. I mean, I'm all about the community. I'm, all, I'm a team player, sometimes to a fault. Yeah. Uh, and to me, this is a much bigger, it's a bigger thing. It's a bigger team, uh, especially in the VR scene right now. The fact that there's so little competition, I think, is amazing. I'm yeah. sure those days will come. Sure. Uh, but the fact that we're so organized as a, as a, a culture almost around this, I think, is amazing. Yeah. I really appreciate it. And, just meeting amazing people, working on, it excites me, you know? Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's, a, there's a breadth to what people are doing. So we always talk about games. Games are easy. They're, they're the low-hanging fruit of, uh, of the VR world. But what I'm more excited about is where other aspects of the art are going. Uh, cinema is one I'm very interested in. I'm learning a lot about it, and I'm we're trying to understand now, it. We're in cinema now, I know, right we are. Yeah, we're in, <laughs> we're in VR. Whoa. That's right. Um, and, and I think that's really fascinating, but what it does is it opens up, and this, again, comes from my artistic training, there, all art is about is pathways into the brain, pathways that you can exploit to, hmm. to open up your eyes and, and show you something else. And it's not even always about your eyes. It's about your ears. It's sure. about your skin and your the way you move and uh, the way you experience the world. And... I guess what's opened my eyes is to see the whole spread of what's going on. And we're only getting a taste of it. This is only the beginning. What I like to tell a lot of folks is, um, you know, people always talk about the bad old days or something, but they talk about it with nostalgia. In a way, right now, this is the bad old days of VR. These are the times that we're going to talk about, the, the times right before it really broke open. Because I feel like it's going to break open. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost impossible to imagine otherwise. That's right. Uh, the momentum that is built just in the last year, in the last two years, is incredible. So where is it going to go? I don't know. Um, but what excites me is also to think about all the stuff that we're doing now is still low-hanging fruit. It's the early, easy stuff. Mm. What I'm more excited about as this industry grows is not what we're thinking about, but I have a six-year-old kid. What's he going to do, uh, do with this stuff? That's right. He's growing up in this. He's already been in VR a lot, more than most six-year-old kids. They adapt really quickly to VR. They do. It's Acclimate, amazing. And they understand how to use it. They don't get simulation sickness. I've never experienced it with my nieces and nephews. But their, their focus is different, too. For instance, hmm. I'm working on content at home. I you know I, I have a, a rig. I got gear at home, of course. I sure. mean, I'm an addict. Yeah, yeah. We all yeah, are. You have to be... So I'm working on stuff, and my kid wants to come in and try it. Dad, 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 let me see. Let me see. Hmm. And I show him. And now when he sees me in the headset, he doesn't bug me as much because he knows what's going on, right. but he still wants to see what's going on. But the funny thing is he always wants to know what's going on behind because he knows that, that when you watch TV or you watch a it's movie, VR. it's there, but I'm in some other place. But when you're in VR, you're in, a, you're in another world. You're yeah. in another place, and there's stuff around you. And it's not just where you're looking. It's everything. It's yeah, everything that's, behind that's you, and it's above and, and below. Yeah. And the funny thing is, older people like me, I'm 39, yeah. you know, like a lot of people my age, it's funny, I put a VR headset and they sit rigid. Mm -hmm. You know, you can turn your head. That's right. Oh, what? What? Yeah. But the kids, they don't know they that. They, right have, they have nothing. They have an intuition to yeah. it. Yeah. And, they, and they're just like, of course I can yeah. look around. Yeah. I wear sunglasses and I can look around with those. Why That's can't right. I do it with that? headset? That's right. It's just like when you give a kid an iPad, they're on it and... My kid makes purchases on my iPad, and I don't even know how he does it. <laughs> yeah, you're like, how did you get that code? How did you do that? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. You just cost me some money, kid. What's, <laughs> what's going on? Pete, thank you so much for being part of the VR report. Always a great time to get your insight, but also from the insight from Unity 3D Technologies. Kamzamida, thank you. Thank you. It's been good.